Hi, it's Tara here with my Bell's Palsy update. Um, it has been one day shy of 17 weeks since I was diagnosed with Bell's Palsy. So a little over four months. And I specifically wanted to give an update because this morning I had a telehealth. This is Nico, the dog, who probably gave me Lyme's disease, by the way, from his tick, the ticks he brings into the house, but that's okay. Um, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so this morning I had a telehealth with the facial, let's see, what is it called? The Facial Nerve Clinic at Mass Eye and Ear Hospital in Boston. Um, I believe, and I'm, I could be mistaken, but I believe they're one of only probably a handful of places in the country that specifically deals with the condition of facial nerves, nerve palsy, uh, which is interesting. And obviously we're very fortunate that we have them here, though they do do telehealth. So if you're watching this video and you're interested in seeing the clinic, um, maybe the telehealth option would be a possibility. Um, so anyway, so, oh, what time did it go? So, um, so let's see. So what did I get from the appointment this morning? Um, it was very beneficial. Um, I definitely feel like I have a better understanding than I did before of my condition. Um, I think the, the overarching, um, feeling I got leaving it as though this might sound discouraging, but I guess it just kind of makes you kind of realize that it is what it is, is that one, there isn't a lot that we understand about facial nerve palsy. And unfortunately, a lot of that has to do with the fact that a lot of research hasn't really put it, been put into this field. Um, I would imagine one, because it's a very pretty rare condition. Most people obviously don't get this. Though he did tell me, I think he said one out of every eight people have facial nerve palsy at some point in their life. So you would think one out of every eight people is actually a pretty high number. Um, but I think that is part of the factor about why there hasn't been a lot of development in this field. And also I think the fact that most people do recover, you know, at least to the point that they're, you know, have facial function again enough that they can carry on with life. So it's not a disease the way a lot of other, you know, much more severe diseases are. And therefore the research money hasn't been put into it. So it is frustrating when you actually have Bell's palsy and you are thinking it probably wouldn't take a ton. Well, you think it might not take a ton of research and effort and money to actually help uh, make us better understand the condition and therefore be able to treat it more effectively. And instead people like us are just kind of left to wait for it to heal on its own. But I guess that is where we are. Um, and then speaking of which, to the fact that another thing that I know I continue to call my condition Bell's palsy, um, technically I do not have Bell's palsy. I have Lyme's diseased, I don't know, Lyme's disease induced facial palsy, which I guess is different. Um, not so much in the actual what happens, the inflammation of the cranial nerve, you know, the, the mechanics of it, but I guess just in the definition, I have Lyme's disease induced palsy. Bell's palsy is different. I believe it's usually believed to be brought on by a virus like the herpes simplex virus and also different than something like, um, I think it's called Hunter, I forget the name of it. It's the one Justin Bieber have, Hunter something syndrome. Um, anyway, just a little detail, but so long and short of the appointment today is that there probably isn't a whole lot that I can do right now. Um, you know, I know there's the option of physical therapy. Um, there's, you know, people, there's different types of procedures. There's surgery that some people have done to actually cut into the, the bone that protects the cranial nerve and to allow the inflammation to, I guess, release. Um, everything, you know, PT, something more invasive, like the, the surgery. There isn't a lot of evidence from my understanding, talking with this doctor that these treatments are necessarily effective. I actually don't think from talking with him, there's really anything that we know is definitely effective for facial nerve palsy, even steroids, which I know tends to be that first line of treatment when you get diagnosed. Um, I think the evidence is still undecided about whether or not steroids are even effective. 
So at the end of the meeting, basically where I am is he said, rest, eat healthy, um, exercise, you know, basically just take care of yourself, take care of yourself so that your body can spend its time focusing on healing your nerve. And that's really, I think the best, the only real advice that he gave to me, he said, I can follow up with their center for physical therapy. Um, that's an option but he didn't sound incredibly um, gung-ho about it. And I don't really want to spend time doing facial exercises that may or may not do anything as far as helping me. So I'll see about it, but that's, you know, something that I'm not jumping on the phone to schedule right now. And what else? So, oh yeah. So one thing that I did find to be interesting that he explained to me was, well, two things. So he says that they, they grade the severity of palsy on a scale of, I think, one to six is what he said. And I've had my palsy now for a little over four months. And he said, based on where he sees with my recovery, he actually put me at like a 4.5 out of six as far as six being like really good response in recovery and one being like nothing. So that was encouraging to hear that in the scale, and even though it feels like I've been dealing with this for forever, he actually said that I'm about a 4.5 out of six, um, which makes me feel good. Um, he did say that a lot of people, even at the four or five month point, show no recovery. The recovery process hasn't even begun yet. So I would say if you're in that boat or if you're really, really, you know, your, your progress is so slow and you're at that four or five month range, be optimistic. Um, this is not going to last forever and that you're going to slowly get recovery. He said it can take up to two years. So I'd heard a year, um, but he was saying two years for recovery and he didn't make it sound like in two years you're gonna have full recovery. Um, more like whatever your best is going to look like, that's where you can be by the end of two years. I wanna say he said to me that after, a, by about a year is when you're really gonna see majority of your recovery, whatever it's going to turn out with is going to be at that point. But he also mentioned this two year number. So I'm not hundred percent sure about that. And he also, we talked a little bit about, um, Oh, I keep on not skinesis, something like skinesis. Um, I'm going to get the wording wrong, but basically the condition where just involuntary, um, kind of counterproductive facial movements will happen after you've had Bell's palsy or you've had facial paralysis. And so he gave a couple of examples. He said, one, like if you smile, you might actually, the eye that had palsy will actually close more or completely close compared to your other eye. So like if you smile, your eyes gonna close. And he also said, if you like pucker your lips, that your eye might close. Um, those are two, I think, triggers for this eye closing thing. And then it's just a whole bunch of other little kind of funky things that can happen with your face which his clinic can deal with surgery to surgery or Botox or physical therapy to address some of those things. Um, so, so that, and then what else? Um, oh yeah, so the skinesis. So he said basically what happens and how this happens, he said a lot of your nerves in your body, particularly the ones in your brain, like you hear about people getting brain damage or spinal cord damage and those nerves never heal back. There are a lot of nerves in your body that do not heal. Fortunately, the, the axons, the nerves in your cranial nerve bundle do have the ability, ability to heal, which is why you can get Bell's palsy and damage your nerves, but your nerves have the ability to regenerate, which is wonderful because for any of us that have, have dealt with this condition, had that not been the case, we would be stuck with whatever palsy we had going into it. Um, so basically the way he explained it to me with this skinesis uh, condition is that as the nerves are healing, so say for example, you have a nerve that used to control your mouth and control the smile in your mouth. He said you have a number, I think he said seven or eight of these nerves in your face. So as the nerves heal back, what can happen is that the nerves can actually go down different pathways in your face and connect to different parts of that side of your face. So a nerve that maybe before used to control your smile could actually somehow migrate up and get reconnected to your eye. So when you smile, 
it causes an involuntary response of your eye closing, if that makes any sense. So it definitely makes sense to me. Um, and so I guess that kind of, you know, explains the whole, the whole condition of skinesis. So that is pretty much, I think, the, the main points that I got from this meeting, which are really just rest, take care of yourself. There's things that you can try. Nothing's really proven that it's going to be effective. Um, right now, I'm still in this kind of recovery process with my face, though he did say like in another four or five months is when I'm going to probably start to see the skinesis starting to come on. Um, so that's something that I'm going to have to look out for. And then he obviously said, if my palsy started to get worse, if my face started to droop more, then obviously that would be something to be concerned about and that I should go to the emergency room because it could indicate something like a stroke or something. So anyway, so I know this is a longer, a longer um, video than usual, but I hope some of the information that I shared you'll find helpful. And that's it. I hope that you are, if you're in this Bell's Palsy recovery, I hope that your recovery is coming along and that you're keeping your spirits up. Bye.